Welcome back to the North Woods. Today we're going to continue working on the 2005 Summit Adrenaline parked over here. Just want to focus on getting the tunnel all cleaned up so we can start making those repairs that we talked about in the last video. Let's jump right into it. the bulk of the nastiness with the vacuum let's hit this all with a good coating of degreaser and just let it sit for a while
All right, well that cleaned up pretty good. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be right now. I think what we're gonna work on next is actually separating the nun, which is this part right here, from the belly pan back here, or the rest of the tunnel slash chassis. I wasn't gonna do that, but again, the more I look at this thing, the more we basically have to, you know, I'm thinking we kind of just have to rebuild it from the ground up, more or less. And even if it's not necessary in the end, I think it's just going to kind of make me feel better about taking this thing back out onto the trail, where I know it's going to be rock solid, I don't have to worry about it failing, and me hurting myself or potentially hurting somebody else. I've been staring at this over here for a while, I can't tell, it almost looks like this was cut, but I don't know why somebody would do that, so I'm guessing that that was just, like, sheer force from the impact. Like I said, when, when that side got pushed back, it pulled this side forward. So I'm guessing that that just tore right there, but just kind of interesting that it just separated like that. Um, unless somebody did cut it for some reason, but I'm guessing that happened when whatever happened to this thing happened to it. So as you might guess, there's really just a series of rivets and bolts, well I think only four bolts, that hold this in place. So not too difficult to separate it from the rest of the chassis. We have this little row of three rivets there. Kind of looks like Orion's belt, doesn't it? But constellations aside, that should be all that's holding this on. So let's get those drilled and pull this off. All right, I think this should lift off of here now. Maybe. The camera did that thing where it stops recording stuff. So anyway, it's off over there on the ground. See? Just about ready to drop the skid, but before I do that, I want to try and drain the rest of the coolant out of the heat exchanger. And I think we're up high enough yet that uh, this should just siphon itself out. Hopefully empty the whole system, but we'll, uh, we'll force some air through there once this is done draining. I guess there wasn't a whole lot left in there, maybe. But grab the air hose and see if we can pressurize that, get the rest of it out.
I don't think we're going to quite get all of it, but that's less of a mess that it'll make when we go to pull this skid. So, better than nothing. We'll take it. I think it's ratchet strap time. So I could have talked about removing rear suspensions at length in my other videos. If you want a more detailed explanation, you can go check those out. But um, ratchet straps are kind of a vital component in getting the skid unbolted. Um, when you install, or when these suspensions are installed, they're installed with a certain amount of preload, so the springs are under tension. Um, and when you unbolt them, and install them when you're trying to get the bolts in, it definitely helps to have some way to add that preload just to compress everything to get the bolt holes to line up. And then when you're unbolting it, it keeps it from, you know, springing apart on you as well. Not that it's gonna, you know, blow up in your face or anything like that, but like I said, there is a bit of spring tension there. So it just helps to have something in place to kind of control that. And I usually go to the bottom of the front arm, back around, the spring on the top of the rear arm and just bring the ratchet strap back around and sort of connect it to itself. Which I understand that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Oh yeah. That's the broken ratchet strap. I'm gonna throw that one away. And this is definitely easier with two people, but if you're like me and short on help, you find ways to manage it by yourself. I wouldn't recommend using an impact to remove these bolts. It really kind of can and does jack up the threads on them. Um, but I've <laughs> got to be honest, I'm not going to show it in the video, but I've been messing around with this with ratchets and wrenches for a little too long now. I'm getting kind of frustrated, so we're just resorting to air tools. I'd rather spend the time cleaning up threads than uh, messing around with bolts that aren't moving. So do with that information what you will.
So I could not get the bearing out of the chain case to uh, remove the driver, so I just ended up unbolting the whole chain case. But before that happened, there was a bunch of uh, swearing and yelling going on, so I didn't really film that. Or, well, I did, but I'm not going <laughs> to put it in the video. But anyway, you should be able to pull the oil seal out of the back side of the chain case, wiggle the bearing out, and then be able to remove the drivers without um, removing the whole chain case. But that was not the scenario this time. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but... You know, where there's a will, there there's a way, so we found a different way that worked for us. But let's try and get these all the way up now. Again, if you can find a second person to help you do this, can't stress it enough, it goes a lot, a lot better, a lot faster, a lot easier. Because you kind of have to apply forces from both sides to get everything to go where it needs to. Drivers are out, and I only got a little bit of grease in my mouth, so not too bad. Let's check out the underside of the tunnel. No major damage under here that I can see. It actually looks pretty decent. Rear heat exchanger looks beautiful. No holes or crinkles in the fins or anything like that, so that should be all right. Front one looks good on the face, but Looks like on the other side of it there, um, one of the engine mounts got pushed back this way a little bit. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. It obviously doesn't appear to be leaking, but I don't know if it will in the future. So I might look at pulling that off of there and replacing it with the one from the beaver tail as well. Oh look, a friend. Where were you five minutes ago when I needed a hand getting the track out of here? Yep. Everyone shows up after the work is done. All right, let's keep going. Now that I'm done talking to spiders, it's a completely normal thing to do. Wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name, check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain, I ingest, I retain, assess and I change, possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints, money, clout and fame, mud disease, a plague, we all love to hate, have to play the game, have to make a name, all our insecurities are on this display. This is war with the enemy, think that it was meant to be, living in a time where disease is on every screen, I won't let them fester me, I know most are festering, negativity is a plague for the mentally weak, no mercy, all I God is working, never stop searching, never quench the thirsty, I'm toxic and psychotic, with this logic, you can't stop it, it's been chronic since I was a boy, so neurotic and chaotic, go! to last with the webs I'm weaving, I can change the past with all I'm achieving, got my foot on gas, never stop competing, if you break like glass, then this life's gonna eat and make mistakes real fast, then you learn how to beat them, if you you can see all the healing if the pain's in the past Move on from the grave and put your foot on the gas No, never stop competing, yeah I've been doing this, I'm on it I just wanna be iconic Sipping on a gin and tonic Got me going off when I'm on this topic, yeah If I ever play, I want it You know that I'm always honest Stay away from those who are toxic Keep by your face, no way you don't want it, yeah Don't try to drain my energy The enemy is everything It's mentally unhealthily Spreading like a rare disease Okay, well, I felt good to stop and clean up a little bit, reorganize, but I've been working on drilling out the left side of this engine cradle for like the past hour. I don't know what these rivets are made out of, but I've uh, been burning through drill bits like crazy. Must be depleted uranium or something like that. But we have one left. Let's get that drilled out, and then we'll try and remove this and look at straightening out the section of aluminum. I think we're going to steal the other one, uh, other engine brace, out of the beaver tail chassis just because we have it we might as well use it i kind of wanted to go and you know like just stick with this chassis and try and straighten everything out and fix it but long term i think it just makes more sense to use good parts instead of throwing something back in here that's already structurally weakened
Looks like I got one more that I forgot about too. That one right there. And these guys that I'm drilling out are not not the bad ones. The ones that are, are bad are these like, I don't know what kind of rivets they are, but they're not pop rivets. They look like they're, well, I guess I don't know what they're called, but they have these raised heads on them and they're just a bitch to drill out. There's that. All right, I'm gonna grab some earplugs and a BFH and let's see if we can get this straightened out.
Well, this isn't going too terrible, but it looks like this engine mount also has a crack in it right there. So we're going to go ahead and drill that one out. That could definitely be welded and put back into service, but maybe we will look at just stealing both of them out of that beaver tail. Well, I wasn't going to remove this front section of the bulkhead, but the further I got down, I think it was probably going to be necessary to make a proper repair here. These holes are just, well, the rest of these aren't bad, but this one right here is just really opened up. So I'm probably going to have to weld that closed and then re-drill it, I would think. But this, uh, this side over here actually straightened up pretty good. Um, I don't have my new welder yet, so I'm going to have to wait till that gets here to um, actually fix the cracks that are in this side of the bulkhead, but um, Like I said, let's check it out. It, it straightened out pretty good So that's pretty straight. It's about as good as I'm gonna get it just by eye But once we have the other steel bracket out of the other chassis We'll be able to get a good idea of how straight we are just based off of how the holes line up But I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think it's gonna line up pretty well I really wanted to reform and reuse this front section of the bulkhead, but I just if it wasn't for um, the lower A-arm mount being kind of squished in like that. I'd probably do it just for the sake of doing it But I think I'm going to check out the one um, On the other chassis and see if I can just seal that and use it. I think at this point it just makes sense to do that um, If I have you know good used parts that are still structurally sound It doesn't really make sense to throw something back in there um, That's that's not structurally sound because once metal bends tears whatever It's just it's not gonna be the same no matter what we do to it as something that's fresh and still has the form that I had from the factory But whatever we do when we put this back together We're gonna add in some additional bracing and additional pieces of aluminum um, along this edge Just to add some strength and rigidity and we might even put something kind of like crossways on the bottom of the belly pan just because this is so it's not, it's pretty flat. We flattened it pretty good, but it's still got a little bit of a, I don't know, just a little ridge in it right here that if I could just make this a little bit stronger, I'd feel better about it. I mean, we've got it down this far. There's no point in half-assing it at this point. Otherwise, this is really all just a waste. So when I do get my welder and I put this back together, I want to add in um, as much bracing as I feel is necessary to make sure that this is going to hold up for me. So this might be as far as I get this week. I didn't get quite as much done as I wanted to, but that's the way she goes. I've got about three 12 hour days into this so far. So it's not really an easy job, it takes some time. And uh, I guess if you're thinking about doing it yourself, maybe think again. So moving forward from here, there's not much I can do until I get my new tools. And I don't know when that's supposed to show up. I think the welder's supposed to get here like first week in March. So hopefully that's accurate and then we can keep moving once that gets here. In the meantime, I'm probably just gonna pull um, more parts off of the other chassis and just kinda inspect those, clean them up, see if that's the route that I wanna go. I don't think I'm gonna film that because it's kinda just the same stuff as what you saw in this video, so. And other than that, I'm probably just gonna try and clean things up around here and organize a little bit more so I'm not tripping over parts and stepping on rivets left and right. But overall, I'm happy with the progress that we've made so far. Hopefully in the next video, we can start moving in opposite direction, stop tearing down and start building back up. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Fun part's just getting started.